We've dealt with jury tapering, wiretapping, a defendant that was literally gagged. Get your hands off me. You are the first to suggest that I have discriminated against a black man. Then let the record show that I'm the second. You were pretty young when this trial happened, and you were in the UK. I'm wondering how much you had a knowledge of it then, and how you really came to learn about what happened. No, what, you know, Mara, you're right. I was eight years old. What I remember of that year was the death of Bobby Kennedy, mostly. Um, uh, I think one of my first memories is the death of John F. Kennedy when I was about three and coming into a brightly lit room and seeing my father watching a tiny little black and white television, kind of been bigger than that, and him going, shh, shh, and mom saying, you know, telling me something had happened that was serious. But I don't, obviously, I don't remember about this. And much to my shame, I, I, I really hadn't looked into the Black Panthers properly. And I believe what I'd been told about them or inferred that they were dangerous. And, and I was so impressed by the nobility of their visions and the kindness of what they were hoping for people um, and the, the justice they were seeking when I got involved in this film, Bobby Seale. Um, um, I, I, so it was a, it's, I think audiences will probably share my experience of finding it just an eye opener uh, about how wonderful and noble these young people were. I've been in a lot of great plays, Shakespeare plays, other plays, but I've rarely been in a play that had so many uh, characters of nobility, not inherited nobility, but earned nobility through, through education and through uh, willingness to sacrifice themselves. Yeah, William, your character, William Kunstler, is like, he really had worked on a lot of interesting cases. Didn't he just, yeah, didn't yeah. he just. Attica is an amazing case where he tried to mediate and was heartbroken when the police came in and used violence rather than trying to make that situation better. Um, he, he also worked a lot with the American Indian movement and a man I met called Russell Means uh, and, and his widow Pearl Means, who's a friend of mine, was saying how much they were all impressed by not only his uh, diligence in fighting for justice for them, but his 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 capability of understanding the first First Nations people and their culture and their their issues and and the terrible genocide that had taken place. Um, yeah, he, he this, but it was this trial that really awoken. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a bit tired. Uh, uh, changed him and made him into that civil rights lawyer. Did you learn anything? Last question. Did you learn anything about Kunstler? that maybe we don't see in the movie, but that you were like, that's amazing. I can't believe he was there. Or I can't believe, he seems like a great guy because of this. Most of those things that are not in the movie afterwards, I, I certainly learned that he was unable to go back to his wife and family after this uh, this film. It, it He couldn't really go back. It, it, it kind of undermined his faith in American justice. Um, as it would anyone's, to see a, a black man like Bobby Seale handcuffed and brought into a in, into an American courtroom, I, I, I'm sure that that was a major turning point in Bill Kunstler's life, and um, he had to really go on a long journey after that to find out to find faith and hope and find his path forward. Um, I'm sure he was reconciled eventually with his daughters and maybe with his wife. I don't know the details. But it, it was a ground shaking event for him. And I think the film has the potential to do that for a lot of people who don't know this history.